Emily, I want a divorce. While I was doing the dishes, my husband John blurted that out unexpectedly. What? Why? I was taken aback by the suddenness. You see, I'm about to come into three million dollars. That's a hell lot of money, right? But it's mine. I don't intend to share it with you. What does that have to do with a divorce? The truth is, I stayed with you for the money, Emily. Your salary isn't much, but it's better than nothing. So I reluctantly carried on with our married life. But once I get those three million, I won't need you anymore. I want to live a relaxed life alone. So please, let's part ways. Fine. If you have that much money, you can sell the house. It will cover the mortgage too. John was a bit surprised that I agreed without any resistance. This would mean goodbye to my tiresome life up to now. I slammed some papers onto the table in the living room. My name is Emily. I love children and work as a preschool teacher. I met John, who was two years older than me, through a friend's introduction, and we've been married for almost eight years now. We bought a house thinking about having children, looking forward to happy days ahead. That's what I thought during our newlywed days. But soon after we got married, John's attitude completely changed. He became more and more obsessed with money. Before we got married, he would tell me my job was a wonderful job. But then he started saying, Emily, all you have to do is play with kids. I'm working my ass off here. You've got a good gig. I bet they call people like you a freeloader. Those words soon became his catchphrase. Being a daycare teacher is tough too. Each child has a different personality. And above all, we are entrusted with our lives. There's no such thing as an easy job. But he didn't listen and ignored my complaints. I was so frustrated and upset. The reason we don't have children, even though we've been married for eight years, is also due to this. He would say, if you have time to make babies, you should work more. Don't tell me you're planning to quit your job using a baby as an excuse. We have a mortgage and taxes to pay, you know? What are you thinking? Don't ever talk about having kids again. I was yelled at and couldn't say anything back. Sure, John is older and has a career, so his income is higher than mine. But the gap isn't that big. It's only a difference of a few thousand dollars. And yet, he acts high and mighty every time. I take pride in my job and feel fulfilled every day. So being looked down upon for such unreasonable reasons was humiliating. John's words pierced my heart, and I would often cry quietly by myself. And lately, John has been saying he wants to be alone more often. In reality, I could live by myself, but I've been sticking with you out of necessity. Don't forget that. Why does he always look down on me? Perhaps it has to do with John's increased overtime at work. It's because you're not working hard enough that I have to work overtime to make ends meet. How about being a little grateful? I was often blamed like this. But even though he's working overtime, it doesn't seem like his salary is increasing. I can tell because I carefully check our finances. But the salary doesn't really change much, does it? Even though you talk big, maybe that ticked him off because John got angrier than I've ever seen him before. Who do you think is making this lifestyle possible? If I wanted to, I could dump you easily. Be prepared. He said something that sounded almost like a threat. He wasn't like this before we got married. Since that incident, our conversations as a couple have steadily decreased. Then, one day, something happened that pushed me further into despair. When we visited John's parents during Thanksgiving, his mother served tea and said, You two have been married for eight years now, right? Emily, you used to say you wanted a child soon. Considering your age, have you decided on how many children you want? I thought this was the perfect time to discuss the issue, so I was about to open my mouth. But then, Mom, we're not having kids. Emily and I talked it over and decided. Oh, is that so? Yeah, she said she absolutely hates the idea of taking care of kids, whether it's at work or home. What? Wait a minute, what are you saying? Mom, can you not bring it up so much? It's stressful for Emily, too. No, that's not what I... Well, if that's what you two have decided, it's okay to just be the two of you. It's certainly hard work. With that, my mother-in-law left the room and I was left unable to discuss anything. On the car ride home, I asked, Why would you tell such a lie? I love children and want them, but you keep saying you don't want them yet. The fact that we can't afford to have a child because you don't work full-time is true. Only start talking when you start earning as much as me. I thought preschool teachers earned more. 
What a disappointment. I don't like the way you're saying that. From the beginning, I never liked children and I never planned on having them. Children are just a financial burden. I'd rather spend that money on myself. While I was shocked, John just laughed. You should never mix personal matters with work. I knew that, of course, but I couldn't help but dwell on this issue. Children are sensitive to these things. A girl named Amy, from the class I'm in charge of, approached me. Miss Emily, what's wrong? You seem less cheerful today. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to worry you. I'm fine, I said, patting her head. Amy wasn't the type to stand out, but she was very mature and kind for her age. She must be receiving a good upbringing. You're not fine. You're usually much more cheerful. I don't want to see Miss Emily like this, she said sadly. I felt terrible for causing such a young child concern. Maybe my daddy can help with Miss Emily's problem. He's a superhero and helps lots of people. He's picking me up tomorrow, so I'll tell him. Amy's mother usually picked her up, but she said her father was coming to the preschool tomorrow because her mother was busy. I told her I was fine, but Amy insisted on introducing me. I hadn't really spoken to Amy's father since I met him at the school entrance ceremony, so I was a bit nervous. The next day, as Amy said, her father came to pick her up. Thank you for looking after Amy. I'm her father. I've heard a lot about you from my daughter. I really appreciate that she seems to be having a good time. Oh, not at all. We're the ones who should be thanking you. Amy is a very kind girl. I got the impression that he was a very polite person, but I didn't really feel like sharing my personal affairs, especially because they were quite embarrassing. They were not something that could be easily spoken about. I can tell that Miss Emily is worried about something, so I want you to talk to my dad. Thank you, Amy. I really appreciate your concern, but I understand how you feel. It can be difficult to confide in someone, even if they're a close acquaintance. However, my daughter is really worried about you. If there's anything going on, please let me help. Surprised, I received a business card from Amy's father and saw his title. But looking back, I think that was the moment my fate changed. That was when I decided to take revenge on John. While I was preparing for that moment, John suddenly approached me. Hey, how about we get a divorce? It was after a long time that John came home early and we had dinner together. My hands, which were washing dishes, stopped there. Perhaps he thought I was bewildered by the suddenness. John grinned unpleasantly. You might not like it, but my feelings won't change. May I ask why? A huge sum of money is coming in. Do you want to know how much? Three million dollars. Three million dollars! John's mouth did not stop, even though I hadn't asked anything. I've been with you because I wanted money. Compared to me, it was just a drop in the bucket. But better than nothing, right? But now, I have three million dollars. So I don't need you anymore. So, let's split up quickly. You've probably had enough of being a leech. Where did all that money come from? There were a lot of things I wanted to say, but first, I asked John the question that came to mind. That's none of your business. We're strangers now. Okay, I understand. Let's separate then. Perhaps surprised by my swift reply, John looked a bit taken aback. By the way, I have no intention of living in this small house anymore. After all, I have three million dollars. I'm thinking of using this money to live in a mansion, so I've decided to sell this house too. That's fine. I'll start looking for an apartment then. You can pay off the rest of the mortgage on this house, right? Yeah, I'll pay it all off. That much, at least. I guess that's natural. Our positions are different, after all. Thanks, that would be great. With that, I decided to take action. John watched me move briskly with a curious look, and so began a series of busy days, packing and looking for an apartment. Once the divorce was more or less settled, I set up a time to talk to John again. I'll leave the mortgage payments to you, John. I don't want to argue about whether I said it or not in the future, so I've prepared a written agreement that includes all these points. Please sign it. Fine, as long as you don't start grumbling about it later. I always wondered why John always had to add an unnecessary remark. A surge of irritation welled up in me, but I managed to keep my temper. John, who had been perusing the divorce agreement, suddenly stopped in his tracks. Hey, what's this alimony section about? Why should I be the one to pay? If anything, Emily, who doesn't work full-time, should be the one paying. You thought you could hide it from me? 
You're so naive, I replied, calmly laying out some documents on the table. Upon seeing this, John's face turned increasingly pale. Thanks for all the overtime work you've been doing every day. I appreciate all your hard work. You love your job, don't you, John? It must be fun to be with your mistress. There was a photo of John and a woman arm in arm, looking quite friendly with each other. This woman, she's just a junior colleague. It just looks like we're arm in arm. Is this your attempt to catch me out? You're still going to say that, huh? Then how about this? I thrust another photo at him. It showed John and the same woman entering a hotel. I thought this would break him, but for some reason, he lashed out again. This must be a fabrication. Don't you know how advanced photo manipulation technology is these days? Do you really think you can fool me with this? I let out a heavy sigh. I hadn't expected him to be this stubborn, but I had anticipated this and made preparations. This isn't something I took. I think they'll be here soon. Just then, the doorbell rang. John looked flustered, unsure of what was about to happen. I went to the front door to greet them and led them back to the living room. This is my attorney. These evidences were requested from a private detective agency, so there's no way they could be fabricated. If you have any doubts, should I call them right now? Pleasure to meet you. I'm Kessler, Emily's attorney. From now on, we'll be discussing the divorce proceedings through me. Now, do you have any issues with the photographs? I'll be happy to answer all your questions. Seeing Kessler's confident smile, John started to panic. It turned out that John's claim of working overtime because he was busy was a lie. The private detective agency found out that he was actually leaving work on time. The reason his income hadn't changed was because of this. If he wasn't working overtime, there would be no increase. He was spending his nights with his mistress. When his affair was exposed, one thing finally made sense to me. It was when John started saying he wanted to be alone. He probably said that because he wanted to be with his mistress. The lawyer I hired this time was a highly skilled one. It was Amy who connected me with him. Amy's father happens to be the CEO of a well-known group. Her words about her father being a superhero weren't a lie after all. Upon hearing the situation, Amy's father immediately contacted a private detective agency and introduced me to a lawyer. I thought it was a bit over the top, but the more I looked into John, the more his flaws started to emerge. And that made me so angry that I decided to go all out. You're acting as if this is all you're doing. You want alimony? I can give you that. I have three million dollars. I can easily pay you that. If you're done here, just leave. I never want to see your face again. I would have left even if you hadn't said that. If anything comes up in the future, let's talk through the lawyer. Don't come to me directly. Who would ever want to see you? He spat out these last words. I silently packed my things and left the house. Perhaps if it had been anyone but John, it might have had more impact, but he was himself to the end. Just how arrogant can one be? I wondered as I left the house. I thought my tale of revenge had come to an end. Then, a few months later, just as I was getting used to my new life in the apartment where the incident occurred, something big changed. My source of stress was gone. At first, of course, I was shocked by the fact that I had divorced, but I didn't even have a shred of love left for John. That's why I also felt a sense of relief. Despite that, he had the audacity to barge into my new apartment. Please, will you listen to me? I beg of you. He shouted so loudly at the entrance that I reluctantly let him in. What on earth do you want? I told you I don't want anything to do with you anymore. He was smirking as he looked around my apartment. I found it utterly disgusting. Well, you've got a nice place here for being separated from me. If there are two rooms in this spacious apartment, I can make one my room right away. What are you talking about? There's no way I'm going to live with a stranger. Don't be so cold. We were once a couple, remember? We've officially become strangers through the legal process. Now what is it you want? Don't talk like that, Emily. It's scary. Well, I just realized that I need Emily. I bet you'd have a better life with me, wouldn't you? You were living in a mansion with your mistress. I guess you were just with me out of necessity. I don't need to be with you. 
No, that was just a moment of confusion. I need Emily. You're just being stubborn, aren't you? Didn't you tell me you didn't need me anymore because you were getting three million dollars? Why don't you find your next wife with that money? No, you're wrong. John started crying all of a sudden. The truth is, I said I was getting three million dollars because I thought I had won the lottery, but... When I looked closely, the numbers were wrong. I jumped the gun. What on earth is he talking about? I was so dumbfounded that I couldn't say a word. I've been looking for a reason to leave you. That's why I think I misread the numbers. I thought that if I got three million dollars, I could divorce you right away and do whatever I wanted. When he saw the cold look in my eyes, he hurriedly added, But I want you to feel reassured. I ended my relationship with her. From now on, I'll only love Emily. So let's start over. You still love me, don't you? What are you saying? I, I don't know anything about that. You can do whatever you want. Please help me. I thought I was getting $3 million and I badmouthed my boss and quit my job. I can't ask him to take it back now. And what is worse, as soon as my love found out I didn't have any money, she stopped contacting me. It seemed like John was abandoned by his mistress. Of course, no one would want a man who was divorced, jobless, penniless, and homeless. That's why I can't pay my loan and I don't have a place to live. Emily, you're my only hope. I told you, I don't know anything about it. If you stay here any longer, I'll take appropriate measures. Did you forget about the pledge you signed when we divorced? If you break your promise, I'll claim five times the alimony. That's enough! You? John, in a fit of anger, raised his hand. Is that what you're going to do? If you lay a hand on me, I'll call the cops right away. You could be charged with assault. This apartment complex has security cameras, so even if you run, your face will be clearly captured. John turned pale at these words. Get out! Now! Or I'll report you for trespassing! At the mention of a report, John fled. There was a sound like someone tumbling down the stairs, but I simply shut the door without concern. Since then, John never came back. Later, my in-laws came to apologize to me. They seemed not to have anticipated such a situation. When I asked them about John's situation, they told me he had fractured his leg falling down the stairs that day. He had to be hospitalized for two months, which caused his expenses to pile up. However, he also had a mortgage and alimony to pay me, so he needed to find work as soon as possible. He begged his boss to let him work from home and rescind his resignation, but he had been quite rude when he quit and they wouldn't let him come back. My in-laws fronted the alimony, so he also had that and the mortgage to repay. He's going to have a tough time. He really brought this on himself. Once things had settled down, I went to visit Amy's house. When I told Amy's father that everything had been resolved, he was very pleased. I've always wanted to meet you since Amy often talks about you. I didn't expect it to happen like this. I just made a few calls. I'm glad it worked out. I'm so happy to see Miss Emily smiling again. She could really be called a life changer. I'm overwhelmed with gratitude. My husband looked down on me, but because I was a preschool teacher, I am who I am now. I deeply felt the importance of cherishing every encounter. I love my job more than ever and want to keep doing my best.